Hello guys, my name is Anna and I'm a Ukrainian and I have decided I will vlog daily from my country Ukraine since the start of this awful war with Russia. And in my daily videos I try to update you on the important real life situations in my country Ukraine and of course I'm always glad to answer your questions and to clarify some facts from our history, our culture, our background or whatever interests you. And I'm very grateful for the questions that you leave in comments as they provide me with the ideas for my future vlogs and also demonstrate me the things that you consider interesting or important or maybe less understandable about my country Ukraine. And there is one aspect that I have decided I need to clarify and I don't know how come I did not speak about that earlier. Uh, these are the changes that uh, happen in our life due to martial law. And uh, I understand that uh, many, and it's really a blessing that many of you, the majority of you, do not have the experience of war. And many things that change and you have to adapt to them really quickly, these are the things that I couldn't have predicted before. I remember that at the start of my vlogging, I've told you about the air raid sirens and that we can hear them all the time and that we have the mobile applications that we use, but also we have this real sirens. And some of you uh, told me that like, why? Because you have them on mobile phones. This is because in really hot zones, you may not have, and many people don't have access to internet, mobile connection, and as a result, they need this traditional old fashioned sirens to be informed about the dangers. So there are lots of things that change when war comes to your country and you have to adapt because that's the only way to survive. And martial law, which uh, leads uh, to uh, suspension of the ordinary law is the way to help the country and people survive. But of course it is not ideal. I remember when this war actually started in 2014, many Ukrainians demanded uh, martial law all over Ukraine or martial law at least in those regions that were annexed or occupied by Russians. And the government was not very much into that because there are pluses and minuses. From the important things that martial law gives you is the focus on this military activities, the majority of actions, the majority of money go to military things and in that direction. But the negative sides are the limitations of the rights that citizens have. Of course, they are small, but they are present. And um, that's why many of you sometimes ask questions about the freedom of movement for men and so on. And this is not authoritarianism or totalitarianism in Ukraine. This is war. And during war, there are things you have to do to survive yourself and to save your country. So when this martial law was announced on all the territory of Ukraine, we had some major changes. One of that is a curfew. You also ask me often if we have it in my region. Yes, we do. We have curfew all over Ukraine. But from what I understand, the duration of it differs from region to region. In my semi-dangerous region, it starts at 11 p.m. and finishes at 5 a.m. At the beginning of war, it was longer and started at 10, 10 p.m. and finished at 6 a.m. During this period, you are not allowed to go out on the streets unless you have some super reasons like going on an ambulance or uh, you have a permit that allows you because of your profession or some needs to travel or to work in the night shift. All the people who break the laws of this curfew can be stopped by patrol, can demonstrate their documents have some kind of fine social work or maybe a military check and i think it's totally okay so our streets at night are empty and uh, people who walk these streets will definitely be questioned and the majority of people understand that of course you won't get shot but be prepared to explain what is the reason of your walking at night and it definitely helps to stop various dangerous people from coming into our cities i do understand that in those zones that are really hot this curfew is longer and it seems to me that in luhansk region for example it is all the day round when Kyiv was occupied and there were street fights and battles on the streets of Kyiv, sometimes the curfew could last two days or something so that Ukrainian military can fight and not worry about killing civilians or injuring civilians. For example, many of that curfews would start 
in the evening of Friday and finish in the morning of Monday. And people are asked not to go out to buy food that they need and to stay at home, uh, don't come close to windows and so on. Of course, now the situation is less hot in cave and people came back to almost normal life. But now we know how to act during this uh, curfew hours. Also, at the beginning of war, we had dry law and you could not buy alcohol and it disappeared from supermarkets and elsewhere. And it was not a problem for me. But later, the state realized that they need money and alcohol bring lots of money lots of taxes and as a result uh, now you can buy alcohol in uh, almost everywhere in ukraine um, also there are restrictions for traveling for men and they cannot cross the border there are lots of exceptions like small children three children and other examples but in general uh, men are mobilized and they can be stopped on the streets they can be um, questioned they will be checked if they are suitable for the military service and also now they are not totally free to travel from region to region it does not mean that they cannot travel from region to region but they have to demonstrate their documents and they will check them in the mobilization database of course it's not ideal many people want to join the ukrainian armed forces others don't that's understandable uh, but this is uh, the wartime and martial law gives that permission also censorship is present but it is not the russian style of censorship but if we read the news we watch the address of the president they focus on positive things and you don't always know the number of victims uh, in a particular situation and of course it's not they are hiding this information if you dig deep on the internet you will definitely find but it is not demonstrated to keep this fighting spirit and this is a tradition for democratic countries too during war times so this is something that uh, changes also i had russian trolls telling me that so many parties were banned in ukraine but these were parties funded by Russia. These were small parties, not just like popular ones. And these were those who spoke about the union with Russia, for example, not something um, just like not suitable for Zelensky or the government. These were Russian or Russian funded parties. They were not big, but I do believe that during the wartime, you cannot allow parties who say that you have to accept the rules of Russia uh, can function in the uh, country. Uh, also, I will tell you one story that one funny story that happens continues happening to my friend. He's a very serious man and um, in his middle ages and he likes uh, he was stopped five times or something by petrol because he looked suspicious for them. And the last time he was stopped when he was taking pictures of a tree, an apricot tree in blossom or something. And rough policemen asked him, why are you doing this? Why are you taking pictures of the street? And he told them, well, I'm taking pictures of an apricot tree in blossom. And they could not believe like, why? <laughs> so there are many funny situations that happen. And uh, maybe in future, they will be reflected in uh, some comedies shot by President Zelensky if he manages to uh, preserve his sense of humor during this uh, hard period. Anyway, if you have some other questions about the new normal in Ukraine and the rules of martial law, the changes, I am uh, ready to answer them. And thank you for your support. Thank you for the coffees that you buy me, for becoming my patrons, for your valuable advice, and most importantly, for sharing the information about Ukraine and uh, for speaking about this war, because we do need your support. Slava Ukraini!